This, this is the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Find us on air, online, on mobile, and on your smart speaker. Please subscribe at ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert. 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 Now, here's the host of Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert. Nick Miles. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast, this is the World's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is our Auto Expo, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with truck girl Jen, who I learned an awful lot of things I never need to repeat about on the way in this morning. <laughs> First of all, we uh, drove in the new GMC Sierra 84. Amazing. Love this truck. It's a diesel. It's really quiet. Um, I have never heard a diesel so quiet. In fact, uh, the new studio is being built right next to my house. And both of the guys who are working on the studio, putting the doors and the windows in this week, have GMC Sierra trucks. And they immediately told me they hated me. Mm -hmm. because I had a new version in the driveway. Second of all, they told me how quiet it was. It was a diesel. And when Jen sat in it today and she looked through it, she started <laughs> to poke through it because she's a GM girl. She has Chevrolets. Mm -hmm. She started to poke through it. She was playing with all the bits and pieces. I used to and own a Sierra. You, you did? That's yes. right. You told me you own a yeah. Sierra. You started to look through it. You were opening little uh, flaps and yep. you were poking things and pushing buttons. <laughs> and you flipped open this flap and there was a 110 <laughs> outlet and you went, <gasps> I could curl my hair in here. I did say that. Well, that's a, that's everything the first girl looks at when they. I could hey, curl my hair in here. When if you're on a date, you're running late, you're going somewhere. Curling iron. Of course, that's the first thing. Microwave coffee. Uh, margaritas was Margarita the second thing you went for to. For tailgating, yes. Yes. Uh, you went to tailgating, and then the conversation completely went downhill. I know, right. <laughs> Uh, we went. We went to. Uh, when was the last time you tailgated? The, yeah. the fact that you hate tailgating. No, that, I didn't say I hated it. Well, all right. We. I hated it in Seattle. Yes, you didn't enjoy <laughs> it. You tried to go to every place the Steelers tailgate, mm -hmm. uh, and then things had gone. Or every everywhere they played, mm -hmm. and things have gone horribly wrong. You've mm -hmm. been body checked by three hundred pound men. Yes. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> yes. You didn't like the Raiders because they scare you, <laughs> um, and football games clearly. And you, you're a big Steelers fan, but when we started to get into it, uh, you just really don't like anything that goes along with football apart from that football. That is so not true. Well, you like watching it from your living room, but that's no front row. Front, really, you'd like a nice, comfy armchair without any of the hassle that goes with a football game. No, it's the fine. weather is horrible. No. The, the I'm good with fans that. are scary. No. The, what, you're good with that? You hate the cold. I know, but you prepare. You, I wear like seven layers. You'd and... only go to football games if <clears throat> the temperature was okay, the fans were kept at bay, you had a front row seat and were comfortable. It's about $1,000. You were easy, comfortable. Yeah. Easy. That, uh, and, and, and it's worth it. Yes. And then the Steelers won. No, they lost the last time I saw them. Yeah, but, but if you know. but I won because I got to go. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Um, so sorry, GMC, you're probably out of luck with Jen getting a Sierra. Unless you could, uh, you could get all those things no. right, she wouldn't be going to your football the football games in your truck. Okay. And and oh uh, yeah, and and the other thing I didn't even get to was <laughs> the margaritas being made in the truck. Yes, was immediately where your uh, alcohol and trucks don't mix. Well, if you're tailgating, yeah, I'm but not then you driving. have to wait like eight hours before you can drive I'm, home. I the amount of margaritas you drink, I'd have a designated driver. Oh well, what's the point of taking the truck then? Anyways, you, okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you just talk yourself into a hole. No, have you have you ever tailgated? Get, have you ever been to a football game? No. Okay. Well, well you're there uh, for just, like twelve hours. <clears throat> yeah. Good. Bye. <laughs> um. You know that's not me. I know. I'd go to a F1 race where I could have a nice me box. Me too. And, that's on the bucket uh, list. Is it? Yeah. I've been to uh, several really hoity-toity motor races. Mm -hmm. But I like it when you're in a box and you have canapes and. Oh, you know, so your nails now we're done. talking foofy buff oh, boxes. Okay. You know me, Mr. I'm Glam. all about foofy motor races. <laughs> And they have to have double, triple pane glass, so I can hear the cars, but I don't have to put okay. up with the I, smoke and the noise. I do have to say one thing about the GMC Sierra. So I was yeah. a little disappointed that you know they shortened the bed because the 
cab is so big now. But I love what they did with the tailgates. They extended it out so that you can actually fit larger items oh, in. You're just setting yourself up here. How am I because setting Because how often up? you use your bed in your truck. All the time. Yeah, whatever. Oh, whatever. Uh, you know, the <laughs> other vehicle that we've been driving this week, which is really awesome, is the, uh, the Mazda CX-5. And I uh, have to tell you, uh, Mazda are hidden in and out of the park, although I think one of the things that's really funny about it, they have a new, a new Mazda 3, a new CX-30, which we can't talk about the driving impressions because it's still under embargo, right. uh, but it's pretty awesome. And uh, the new for 2021, the CX-5, which is also really awesome. And we thought we'd get somebody local on to talk about it. So uh, Ricky Bowen, the sales manager at Olympia, uh, the Mazda sh- uh, dealership in Olympia. Uh, welcome to the show, um, Rocky. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so do you have these uh, CX-5s on the lot already at the dealership? Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, actually we do. Uh, we've got a shipment of uh, the 25 or 21 um, you know, with all the trim level, different packages, uh, the new carbon edition, uh, CX-5 is really uh, taken off. Um, and so a lot of the consumers really feel that might be the best bang for the buck. Um, a ceramic color, you can get it uh, with, you know, the black interior or the red with the black rims. You can get it in the non-turbo or the turbo edition. So you've you've got a difference about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 from the non-turbo to the turbo, but it's just a, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic unit. It's a it's a great package, but the whole line, you know, in that CX five is uh, wonderful, class class leading. Um, all it touches on all the points of the safety and fuel economy, styling, handling. Uh, just a fantastic. Actually, my wife. That's all she's driven since 2013. So, um, you know, if you're looking for something that's fun, affordable. Uh, the perfect car, um, the, the perfect car. My, I actually put my dad in a CX-5, so uh, I'm kind of with you on that. It kind of rocks. And the interesting thing about it is, uh, this is a, he's a 78-year-old man. Sit him in the driver's seat, and, the, uh, you know, I'm driving like 600. I'm, I have a vehicle in my driveway with 617 horsepower, so I'm, you know, I'm used to quite a lot of power. And I sit him in there, and he, he's, he gets on the freeway in his Mazda CX-5. And he flips it into sport, and he goes, "Watch this!" <laughs> he, power, he powers yeah, it on the awesome. freeway. <laughs> yeah, that sport mode. You know, you, if you're you you know what you're talking about there, especially in my Mazda three. I got a twenty one uh, Mazda three all wheel drive, and and uh, I spent about eighty miles round trip into work. And that sport mode, uh, that that is a lot of fun. A lot of people people don't know about it, man. We uh, we we think that's a, that's a great selling tool for. Uh, just the little added performance, um, you know, shifting gears a little different and uh, a lot of fun. Absolutely. The Mazda always tell me, I, I watched a video on the Mazda website and they were, they were like, we're not, re- we're not trying to recapture our Zoom Zoom heritage. And I'm like, well, I don't think you ever really lost it. No. That was the, f- the one thing about Mazda's to me. Uh, it, two, well, two things about Mazda's that always have captured my, uh, my complete attention were the the way that Mazdas are designed is you don't get your eyes taken off the road. They don't put a lot in the cabin that pulls your eyes off of the road. The screens are always very simple. If you take your eyes off the road to look at the screen, you can find what you're looking for immediately. So you don't get pulled away from the road. You're always concentrating on your driving. And the other thing is... It doesn't matter how many car companies tell you their vehicles are fun to drive. The ones that are really fun to drive are Mazdas. Everywhere from the from the MX-5, the Miata, all the way down to the smallest vehicles, that, or the biggest vehicles, even the CX-9, they are always fun to drive. And I don't think Mazda has ever lost the Zoom Zoom. And now with the turbos, whoo! Uh, I you know, driving the and I can't talk about the the CX thirty, no. but talking about the the Mazda three now with the turbo and and the CX five, yeah. it just it's a big pump to the backside when you put your foot down. Yeah, absolutely. And you made a good point. You know, it doesn't matter if you're driving a Mazda three, Mazda six, CX nine, Miata. You know, they all have commas as a driver eccentric. You got you you really get a good feel for the road. You know, uh, you feel the car is really. Uh, one with the driver, um, and uh, you know it's it's it the handling, uh, just the whole the whole line is fantastic. And in, in that, yeah, the, that CX thirty, uh, I've had the ability to drive one uh, with the turbo. So a lot of people, uh, the people are going to be really excited about that unit as well. Um, but yeah, from top to bottom, um, they all have something in common core: the driver eccentric uh, feeling. Um, 
It's, yeah. it's fantastic. They put it together. And, and not to take my eyes off of the tech, because the tech's there, the My Mazda app, you mean, the Wi-Fi in the vehicle. You do get that two gigabyte trial, yeah, so you can try out the Wi-Fi. And if you have kids, uh, the Wi-Fi is an absolute must. You can stick it in the back with your uh, iPad. I mean, that's a big deal. Too. Don't forget the 10-speaker audio system. Oh, it's yeah. It's Bose. The uh, Bose system as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they haven't skimped on anything. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about pricing uh, you know, before we run out of time. If you want to yep. get into a into a CX-5, where do we start? Where do we top out? And, and, and how does it look for people getting into them? Well, um, you know, just depending on what Taylor making the needs, you, you can start with the Sport, which is going to run you – you know, right around that twenty-seven to twenty-eight thousand dollar entry level. Um, then you have the touring package, um, which is going to push you about that twenty twenty-nine thousand dollar range. Um, with uh, then you can get the preferred package, which will give you you know sunroof and power lift gate. Um, you also have the GT. You've got a couple models on those. So if somebody's looking for leather and a lot of the great standard features on that car, um, you know that's going to run you about. 33, then you have the premium, which gives you heated rear seats, uh, heads-up display, heated steering wheel, which is going to run you about 35. Um, and then you get into uh, the signature um, and uh, the reserve, and, and so those are going to run you right around that $38,000, $39,000. It really depends on, you know, what, what, what you're looking for is, uh, you know, the fine trimmings. Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, there, there's a little bit for everybody across the board. Affordability is there based on the market. It's, uh, you know, the, everybody else has really good product as well. So Mazda just stands out in that fit and finish. You know, yeah. uh, the buttons don't wear down on you. Um, you know, oil changes every 7,000 miles. So, um, but yeah, you got a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah, absolutely perfect. And I will tell you, uh, my dad is, is besotten with his. Uh, Rocky, thanks so much. Uh, for the, Olympia de- the Olympia dealership for Mazda, they have them on the lot. So uh, you, you want to go test drive one, that's my recommendation. Still to come, we're going to talk about more on Our Auto Expert. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show. Uh, you can find them all on our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at ourautoexpert.com. Uh, the big news this week was uh, reveals from Nissan. They revealed their brand new uh, Frontier and their Armada. But... Already on the market is the brand new Nissan Kicks, and they're here to tell us all about it, uh, which is their entry-level SUV, is uh, Matt White. So, Matt, tell me, is the Kicks already in dealerships, or are we still waiting for the 2021 Kicks to arrive? Hey, Nick, thanks for having me. Yeah, so the the Kicks are on their way to the dealerships as of uh, yesterday, so we should start seeing them hitting the roads uh, very soon. And now the Kicks actually was, it, you know, it was first introduced, I'm going to guess, three years ago or two years ago. Is that right? And this is the mid-cycle refresh? That's correct, yes. Uh, it hit the market for uh, model year 2018 uh, was the, the initial launch in the U.S. market. And, and it's sort of this sort of very, very hot segment. And Nissan really revolutionized the kicks where you gave us a lot of material in the kicks that came as standard. So where a lot of car companies were charging uh, extra money for things like uh, Ford Collision Warning and those sort of things, but, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I think one of the fun things that Nissan decided to do was include a lot of stuff uh, in the base price of the car and then make uh, the add-ons fairly inexpensive so you know things like standard seven inch touchscreen uh, and those type of things uh, where a lot of people had to pay for uh, generally things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, you decided at Nissan let's just include it that's correct yeah and that's actually made uh, the kick a lot of fun to work on uh, as a group so uh, for 2021 I, I know you mentioned uh, Apple CarPlay so we we've, we've moved that to standard on all trims uh, in 2021, um, and uh, in 2020, introduced Nissan suite of uh, safety features at standard, our Safety Shield 360. Uh, so, at a starting price below twenty thousand dollars, it's it's an amazing uh, value package and a, and a great story for the car itself. 
I think one of the things that Nissan is becoming famous for, and let's hope that uh, the new Frontier will probably don't push you out of that, but you had three vehicles that started under $20,000 uh, at one point, and the, uh, now I think with the new Frontier, that might uh, probably might start above $20,000. But the Kicks was one of them, and that's you know definitely when people are looking for a new vehicle, price is one of the major shopping portions for them. But when you can get things like uh, standard USB ports um, and you can get all the things like uh, a nice styling and an SUV that starts under $20,000, that's a big purchasing plus for a lot of people. And why, what made the kicks uh, really appealing apart from the price for people? Because I think one of the things when I look at the kicks is there are some, uh, let's say, lesser brands out there that do vehicles that start under $20,000, which I probably wouldn't buy. Because they don't look very appealing, but uh, the the exterior is is definitely appealing of the kicks, isn't it? Yeah, and, and that's really the uh, for us in 2021 the the revamped styling. It's it's a lot more crisp and and kind of a more uh, stronger look, uh, especially from the front end. You know, it, it's really ties in with the the rogue that we recently launched and really fits within the family. Um, so, yeah, it, in the expressive styling really, I think, resonates with the, the younger customers that we're, we're targeting. You know, these uh, younger customers that are, are looking for an entry price point, and they, they want all that tech, and they want something that really stands out. Well, I don't know about you, or Jen, when was, how old were you when you got your first new car? Oh, geez. I, I, my first new car, now he's putting me on the spot. <clears throat> I'd say 27. Yeah, I think it was about 27 too when I got my uh, my first brand new car. Yeah. Uh, you know, or when I purchased my first brand new car. Matt, wh- how old were you when you got your first brand new car? Uh, I believe my first brand new car was a 2001 uh, Nissan Xterra. Actually, um, yes. I would have been 20. I believe 20 years old at the time. Oh, look at you! You beat us both. Yeah, but yeah. see, I bought a. I built a house first, so that came first. Oh, well, then the car later. Oh, oh, oh. So. oh. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely the sort of thing where someone could get their very first car. The Kicks is probably yeah. when you – this is the sort of car that you would purchase uh, that your first car as well. Uh, in, in, and I think the first model of the Kicks had the built-in speakers into the headrests. Does the 2021 have the same thing? Yeah, so that actually comes with the premium package on the SR trim. Um, it's a fantastic feature. Um, we have partnered with Bose on that, and it's a it's a class exclusive to the Kicks. Um, and, and really, the effect you get it's almost like a, a surround sound type of of sound when you're you're sitting in the driver's seat. So it's really a unique experience. And if you were to check every box and get the top <laughs> trim level, and and how much could you spend on the kicks? If I if I was going to go crazy, it's a Nick thing. If, if you were to go crazy, <laughs> um, you could you could keep it under twenty four thousand. So oh, nice uh, job, if you Nick. Were, if, yeah, if you were to go with the SR, uh, include the premium package, um, you'd be sitting under twenty four thousand. Uh, that's uh, that's actually not bad. So that's I so could good. have bought four of these for what I got with BMW X6 M4. Uh huh. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I mean, I could have made four members of my family very happy. Exactly. Uh, yeah. There you go. Uh-huh. And, or rather, just me. Uh, and, uh, and what's the official on sale date for this? Is it uh, obviously they're being shipped to dealers right now? But does it go on sale as soon as it hits dealers? It will. Yeah. All right, so they're on deal, uh, heading to dealers right now. Uh, I think that's a great deal. If you're looking for a small CUV, uh, Nissan definitely has one that starts under twenty thousand dollars. The Kicks uh, for 2021 heading to dealerships right now. I do enjoy it. I am um, I'm expecting one to arrive in my driveway very soon for a test drive. So we'll bring you more on that when it does arrive. I want to thank Matt White from uh, Nissan. He is the marketing and sales manager for the uh, CUVs for for joining us. Um, our auto expert. We have more on the way by the way jen uh, i want to talk about sales in the united states and how they're doing because we updated everybody in the midst of covid but uh we don't know how sales have done usually january february is a slow time for sales Mm -hmm. in the united states and i want to look back and see if there's some really good deals because usually vehicles that are not selling well at all are the ones that you can go out and buy and get good deals on because those are the ones that manufacturers start to put a huge amount of money on the hood.
prices. So if you're looking for a deal on a brand new car. Maybe sedan. Maybe, uh, well, they're always a good deal. Tyson, <laughs> <laughs> Tyson Nominee will be joining us from J.D. Parent Associates. Stand by for that. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. This is our auto expert, and uh, you can get us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can just direct message us. Want to start a car conversation? It's super easy to do. Just direct message us at our auto expert. Our auto expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. And uh, we like to get our news from one single source, uh, our auto expert, but we like to get mm-hmm. all of our uh, automotive news expert uh, stuff about sales from Tyson Hominy. He is the vice president of data and analytics at JD. Power and Associates, and we like to see what sales look like in the United States. And as far as uh, things are in the first quarter, uh, heating up uh, the last quarter of last year, as far as sales are concerned, uh, January, uh, Tyson, tends to be a very slow month. Everybody spent all their money towards the end of the year trying to get rid of tax debt, and also we've run out of cash thanks to Christmas. So automotive sales tend to grind to a halt apart from those President's Day sales. How did January look overall? Well, hi, Nick and Jen. Thanks for uh, having me back again. Uh, January, um, you're absolutely right. On a seasonal basis, January is the smallest month of the year. So it's it's a lot like what I say preseason football. You know, it's, it's a good way to try out new things, but no one makes their year in January. That said, comparing it to previous January, it was it was stellar. (laughs) <laughs> Sales are up 6%, our best month in, in four years. Wow. Um, and even total sales, uh, we're, we're up 1%. That includes the fleet side of the business. We even grew there. So great start to the year. Hmm. That's amazing. Let me think about this. So does that predict a good year to come, or is it just pent-up sales due to COVID? <laughs> um, well, that's the thing. It, it, it isn't always predictive of the full year. Again, it, it's early, and it's the smallest month of the year. It doesn't hurt, but it probably isn't going to make or break anyone's year. All right. Let's let's uh, let's let's talk about how we look on individual segments. So you gave us a little look at uh, commercial segments and fleet sales. How do we uh, look on uh, individuals uh, looking at different car segments? So we know that a lot of uh, companies are still moving into the SUV and truck segment because that seems to be where American tastes are going. How, do, how does the, uh, the sedan segment look versus the CUV and light truck? <laughs> we want to uh, swallow the frog first here, I guess, and get sedan out of the way. It's bleak, Nick. Um, it's all three of our primary sedan segments were the three worst performing segments in January. Uh. Mid-car, compact car, subcompact car, all really bad, which means then SUV and trucks continue to grow. They were up about four percentage points. Um, still closing in on that 80% share mark for those those two segments. Wow. Uh, super interesting because yeah. it's, uh, you know, as predicted, uh, we were always saying that trucks and SUVs would be the strong, but it seems to be, uh, you know, the percentage-wise, moving much stronger than anybody had guessed and much faster than anybody had guessed. Now, leaving those numbers aside, does that mean that, uh, you know, after talking to some of these dealers where 80% of their inventory is... Uh, is sitting on the lot there and not being sold. Uh, Does that mean the deals are ripe to be had where it comes to sedans? Uh, Not so much anymore. Uh, It used to be that way as the industry was moving uh, unexpectedly toward SUV several years ago. We had a lot of sedans just sitting there. Nowadays, automakers have really dialed back the volume of sedans. Therefore, the deals aren't very good. But I'm going to tell you, there's really not a lot of good deals out there anywhere. Transaction prices are up 8% year over year, $3,000. Wow. wow. So, uh, you know, if you want a vehicle now, you're probably going to have to pay for it. And if you can find a deal, you should probably get the money on the hood, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, if you could find the vehicle, um, absolutely get it. And deals are hard to find. You know, if, you, if you're shopping for a car and you go there and the dealer says, you know, it's not just I don't have the red SUV you may want. They may not have any of that SUV, and, and they're probably telling the truth right now. Um, you know, if they say you should maybe look at this instead as a consumer, um, and this is the kind of time where you should believe them. Yeah, absolutely. They probably don't have anything in stock as what you, you're expecting. Right. Mm. Uh, what is 
the, the, the hottest tickets when it comes to breaking down those trucks and SUV segments? Where, where are the real hot vehicles? Is it pickups? Is it uh, the full-size pickups? Is it the, the light pickups? Is it full-size SUVs? What's really showing its colors now? The subcompact SUV space is on fire. Um, that's the smallest one we have, you know, and, and the names may not even resonate with a lot of consumers yet. Your, your HRV and your, your CHRs, you know, like these aren't household names yet, uh, but the segment continues to grow. And, and that's really the, the front door to the industry right now. Um, so if you're looking for a car, you're a first time buyer, um, you're going to be looking at a lot of these subcompact SUVs and that space continues to explode right behind it. What we would call like the three row crossovers the big, you know, the big boys, um, your Hyundai Palisades and your Kia Tellurides are just on fire. So if you're going to be bringing out a vehicle in the next year, Nissan uh, Kicks or uh, something like that uh, in that small subcompact level or a big three-row SUV like uh, your VW Atlas uh, three-row is probably the, the hot tickets. Yep, that's, that's exactly it. And Nissan unveiled a new Pathfinder this week. Yep. It looks fantastic. It looks like it's going to be a great seller as well. Now, we know that last year, the small size pickups, the, uh, the Frontier size, the Tacoma size, those were up despite a lot of other things being down. Uh, are they still doing well or uh, is it sort of leveled out in the, in the mid-size pickup market or in the, uh, the half-size pickup market? I'm not sure what we call that pickup market. Yeah, we, we call it mid-size. We don't even have a small one anymore. We just call everything mid, you know. Right. Um, so mid-size pickup. <laughs> Yeah, it, it continues to do well. Also, um, it, it sales we're up 17 percent year over year. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of excitement there. And once again, Nissan unveiled a new Frontier this week. So there's more new new product coming from Nissan. This, um, coincidentally, so um, that space also continues to do very well. Now, with a change in government and a change in policy, it uh, looks like there's going to be favorable uh, love towards electrics, hybrids, alternative fuels. Are we seeing any attention go towards that? Because there's obviously a lot of news. There's a Super Bowl ad uh, with uh, Will Ferrell uh, mm-hmm. promoting the electric cars from uh, General Motors and Cadillac and their new battery technology. But is in reality that turning into attention to sales? Well, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of hype and a lot of news about it. And the biggest one since the last time we talked is that GM announcing they are trying to get to 100% EV in 15 years, right. um, which is pretty remarkable considering today they're less than 1% EV. So that would be a dramatic change. Uh, but that isn't necessarily translating to sales in the market today. EVs uh, ended 2020 right around 2% of sales, which maybe some people listening are saying, wow, all I hear about is EVs. In the U.S., it's really different than, than Europe and China, where there are double-digit sales now. All right. So uh, the, that's some big chunk to be bitten off. We always are uh, giving the preface there, though, that uh, there's probably nobody who's making these targets, like Mary Barra, going to be in the same position. And you and I may not even have driver's licenses in 15 years. Who knows? Uh, so I we, will. <laughs> you say you the wheelchair will. license. <laughs> yeah. but, but ultimately, ultimately, you know, it's easy to make predictions when you're l- unlikely to be in power. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, it's a good goal to have. Whether it's real or not is, is very different. There's also kids who are, are not yet born who may even have driver's permits by, this, you know, by the time that that is uh, sanctioned. So there you go. That's the one. Anything else that uh, is a standout in the numbers? Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people, you know, want to want to talk about about Tesla in general. It seems to be a pretty big question mark. They had a really big sales result for 2020. You know, 500,000 units sold globally. Uh, you know, in the U.S., um, it, it's not as big, but I would I still expect big things from their Model Y, their their first uh, really affordable SUV that they have. Um, it hasn't quite gotten off the ground yet. COVID kind of knocked the wind out of its sails. Um, but I would continue to uh, to watch for that space because I think that's going to be a hot product here in 21. Now, what about luxury? We didn't really touch on the luxury vehicles, but, you know, Mercedes, Audi, Lexus, and, of course, uh, the world's number one seller, BMW. How, how are they faring during uh, the January month and, uh, and the beginning of 2021? It's a bit mixed. Some of, some of the biggest names that you mentioned, like Mercedes and, and BMW, didn't have a great January. In particular, BMW um, really isn't off to, to a great start. As mentioned, Tesla Tesla's doing strong. Um, also in the mix, Cadillac. We don't talk about them too much, 
Um, they they had a great January, but January is kind of weird for premium because a lot of a lot of companies go really big with red bows in December, and so there's a pretty big fall off in January seasonally. So it's not a great month for premium. Um, I'm not going to really draw too many conclusions from from these premium results. All right, uh, January of course is not usually a big month for for luxury anyway. So, and I know that even people like Buick uh, are still offering uh, seven thousand five hundred dollars purchase allowance on their vehicles. So they were pushing January pretty hard as well. Um, and and there's big announcements still to come. I think from some brands um, in the next few weeks uh, on what they're going to be doing with uh, a lot of their trucks and uh, a lot of their luxury vehicles. So we still have uh, quite a few uh, big announcements to come this year. Any uh, movement on super luxury? I know that uh, we heard that some of the super luxury brands had better years than expected. Yeah, they last year was was a great year in particular for for Bentley and Rolls Royce. Um, I, I still expect most of, of that momentum to carry over um, here. Um, you know, the the new uh, Bentley Continental was was doing very well, and the Rolls Royce Cullinan SUV, kind of a a hard one to roll off the tongue there. Um, we're doing very well last year. I expect a lot of that to continue, in particular because the stock market remains very strong. Um, and, and employment at, at, at the top end, those, those shopping a, a Ferrari right now uh, are having very good economic situations. So I would expect 2021, um, near as we could tell, to continue to be very strong for those super premium sales. And, of course, you can buy your Rolls Royce with Bitcoin as well, which is doing extremely well. So uh, all those people can take their Bitcoin and buy a Rolls Royce for a lot less than they thought they could maybe six months ago. Tyson, always good to have you on the show. Stand by. More Our Auto Expert on the way. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Oh, you're listening to Our Auto Expert. Uh, over 10,000 people download Our Auto Expert podcast, and many more have streamed it and stream it every single week. Join the happy listeners via iHeart, Spotify, Pandora app, Deezer, Podbean, CastBox, and, of course, Apple Podcasts, as well as OurAutoExpert.com. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is Our Auto Expert radio show. Two million Americans get their automotive news daily from our auto expert. Um, Jen, it's been a very, very busy week in automotive news. Mm -hmm. Have you been keeping abreast of what's going on in the world? I've been trying. Did you see the new Ford Raptor unveiled? Ah, I did not see it, but I read the press release. It's it's pretty yummy. There is, is a video. It? If you want to see the video, go to ourautoexpert.com. There is a new Raptor. You can read Perry Stern's article about the Raptor. Uh, of course, what happens is Ram reveals the new uh, TRX. Right. And then right after, this is how it goes, mm -hmm. Ford comes out with a new Raptor. It's all pacing and timing. Uh, so that's that's pretty, you know, incredible. Uh -huh. And, of course, you can also, uh, I'll be this week, I'll have the Raptor um, on a live broadcast this week. Really? Mm, I'm not driving it, though. They won't let me drive uh, it. What? Yes, I'm doing. Um, I'm Look, doing. A, you know, about a thousand million TV stations from, I know. from Detroit uh, live. And uh, are you watching the video? Are you watching my video? No. What are you doing? What is? I'm, what do I always do? Yeah. I'm reading card stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just. just yeah. So uh, the brand new Raptor. It looks pretty good. Uh, if you go, uh, we got some footage of it jumping. I'm I, You know, I, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, Everyone was waiting for that six-liter engine. Mm -hmm. yeah, my friend Aaron Biscana up mm -hmm. in, uh, in Washington State. Yes. He was like, I want a six-liter engine. He's got, I think he has a 6.2 in his. I was going to say 6.2. And, and he was like, oh, I don't want a 6.2 liter. And, of course, 3.5 liter EcoBoost. He's like, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> Only 6.2 liter. Yeah, 6.2. Uh, but it's a V6, but, uh, you know, it does 500 miles on a single tank. Does I sound like Aaron when I do that? Because <laughs> um, he's not happy. Why is big? You sound like a whimpering puppy. <laughs> well, he is. He likes his 6 liters. I want a 6.2. Uh, yeah, he wants a 6.2 liter. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it's a 3.5 liter. People, admit. but you can operate it from your phone. You can turn the lights on. You can, you know, start it. You can it has over the air update in, uh, updates. It oh. uh, you can do trail maps. You can do a lot of off roading. It has thirty seven inch tires, <laughs> big tires. Um, <laughs> it has big tires. He's, he's probably happy about that. I haven't actually <laughs> talked to him about it, but I know before it came out, he was always like, six, six, my six liter. 
He wanted the six liter out of it. Um, I don't blame him. I'm all about the big engines. You I mean, are? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're not good for the environment, young lady. I know. We talk about this conversation like every week. Every week. I am a huge footprint. I know. <laughs> Carbon footprint. <laughs> Jordan didn't miss that one. She says she's a huge footprint. Carbon footprint. She has a four, eleven, and three quarters I, footprint. Okay, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a four, eleven, and three quarters huge footprint. Okay, let's not start this. <laughs> but, Why? But, but I, like I said, my sister balances me out. She's got my back. She's got an EV hybrid. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so two wrongs make a right. No, no she's, she's right, a, she's and a, I'm wrong. Right. So, so you make a zero. Balances us out. Really? Yeah. Would it be much better for the world if you were both green, and the world then would be greener? So you said 500 miles per gallon? 500 miles a tank. A tank. Oh, oh okay. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah I get about four. If you're just joining the show, clearly Jen <laughs> listens to nothing. I try not to pay attention to Nothing that goes out on the air. <laughs> nothing that goes out on the air. I... Uh-huh. Uh, inspired by the F-22 <laughs> fighter jet, uh, specifically the F-A-37 Talon, uh, this the graphics on the side of the vehicle are uh, very cool. Get, get, stop leaning over and looking at my computer pictures. Get your own. Oh wow! I am. I'm actually looking at the Sierra. The Sierra. Yeah. What we're talking about the new you're, you're, Raptor. You're talking about the Raptor. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still drooling over the Denali Sierra. <laughs> No, the eighty four is. I know, but the I'm, Denali's all chromed out. The eighty four is all blacked out. I, I know. I like. Them. Both. Wow. Can we talk about the Raptor? Can you, you can talk can about you, the can Raptor? Can try and get on the same page in the show today, please? Uh, so inspired uh, from the Iron Man as well. It's, uh, it's muscular, it's beefy, it's loud, but it's also environmentally sane, not environmentally insane. Just thought I'd make that point. Uh, new Raptor this week. Uh, brand new. Oh, did you see the new Frontier? Nissan Frontier? Yes. At a glimpse. Uh, what did you think? It was nice. That's it. That's all you got. Well, like I said, I only saw one photo. I, it's not like I got to drool over Do it. I have to find more photos for no. you? No. It was really, really nice. It's been a very busy week for me. I apologize. I didn't get to read all the press releases. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. new Nissan Frontier and a new Nissan Pathfinder. I mean, Nissan... That's Ar- exciting. Yeah, you see, this is so funny that you say that. Why? Um, because Nissan uh, were pushing the Pathfinder much more than they were pushing the Frontier. And I have to tell you, just in my gut, the... The Frontier was much more impressive than the Pathfinder. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Pathfinder is not at all bad. But I have to tell you, the Frontier was much more impressive to me anyway. Much more impressive. Oh, yeah. It is. It's nice. So, it was very nice. Um, look. There you go. What do you think? No, I, I'm looking at my own. Oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> uh, it looks to me like the Titan, like a mini Titan. It does. It does. Um, boxy square. Uh, some people have commented on the new Frontier looking a little bit like um, the Tacoma. But I don't think it looks at all like the Tacoma. Uh-uh. I think it looks... I, I can see what they're talking about maybe with just the grill itself, but the, but the rest of it, no. No, I think because the, the, the Tacoma grill has angled. Right. But this well, is very square. I don't know. I think it looks like a Land Rover at the front. Uh, really? Yeah. It could be a Land Rover front end. Hmm. No, disagree. All right, then. <laughs> I just think uh, they did themselves proud. That tree, yeah, they did good. I think they did really good. The new Frontier. Go go check it out. I new like Frontier. this one. Go check out the new Pathfinder. You like the Pathfinder? Oh. Is that not cool? I don't think that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. That's it. It's different. It's because the guy souped it up. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> they are very, very pretty. Uh, new vehicles, I will just tell you that. Yeah, you should go on to ourautoexpert.com. You can find out all about those vehicles and uh, more. Do you want to know what's on the rest of the show, Jen? I know it's on the rest of the show. All uh, right. Does anyone else want to know? 
Probably not. Find out how to plug in your vehicle and charge it up. Because if you're thinking about a home charger, you're thinking about possibly getting a plug-in uh, of any kind, yeah. uh, plug-in electric, <clears throat> uh, a plug-in hybrid electric. Uh, you want to know all the facts about getting a home charger. We're going to get that covered for you. Plus, and what else? The Lexus UX 200 F Sport. Yes, uh, because, of course, this is the hottest segment right now. The, new, uh, the, the subcompact segment. Plus... We're going to talk Ford trucks. That's all coming your way. Stand by. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the Northwest to the Southeast, this is the World's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is our Auto Expert, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with Truck Girl Jen, who we've established if she had a 110-volt socket in her truck, would have a margarita machine. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Add a little Midori. Hey, I'm, it's just pretty useless. What else would you do? A microwave, a coffee maker? Coffee maker, curling iron. I don't know. Just turn it into your bedroom and be done with it. That's right. Uh, live in your truck. No. What? No. Cats would enjoy it. No, I don't think so. TV, <laughs> bed, and my house. Well, you know, it's big enough in there. You could probably could put a TV in there. And... I'm sure you could get the TV onto the dashboard. Mm hmm. And then uh, you just plug it up to a charger somehow. That's right. You got your laptop, External power. your phone. If it was a plug-in hybrid, you'd be green, too. A yeah. diesel plug-in hybrid. Why don't they have any of those? I wonder. Um, <laughs> I have recently uh, had a slew of electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles at my house. Mm -hmm. And I've been plugging them sadly into the 110 outlet. outside. In fact, so sadly into the 110 outlet outside my house because the new studio is being built, which will have a power outlet in it. With your um, huge extension cord yeah. that you trip over. <laughs> All the time. It's sad. You've been there. Yes, I've tripped In fact, over. so sad. And we've tripped over it so many times, it ripped the socket out of the wall several <laughs> times. Sad. But <laughs> Daryl Harrison to the rescue. That's uh, right. From ChargePoint. We're going to have a proper ChargePoint uh, proper outlet put into the wall uh, in the new studio. Um, so we can charge our vehicles respectably, properly, and do it the right way. Uh, welcome to the show, Daryl Harrison. He is uh, the chief bottle washer and the head honcho at ChargePoint. <laughs> is, what's your title, Daryl? Are you in charge of all things public facing? Yes. So, so my, my title, my official title, is Senior Director of Global Communications and Social Media. Wow. Right. That's, yeah. that's huge. Very long title. Yeah. It's a very long title. Is there enough? <laughs> is there enough room on your business card to get it all on, or do you have to have like a long business? It goes card? on the back. Yeah, it, it wraps around us. <laughs> okay, good. so they're, they're two sided. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, as long as you know, as long he, as you have it's it. green, he's going green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so ChargePoint, uh, tell us a little yep. bit about ChargePoint. Clearly, they are sure. an, an electric electric charging company. I mean, I'm getting sure. an electric charger from you guys to put on the wall in sure. our new studio, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. It is. Yeah. So I, you know, I think in, in short, at ChargePoint, we're building the new fueling network. And it's not really new because we've been doing it for more than 13 years. And really, our, our goal, our, our broad vision is to help enable all people and goods to move on electricity. And so what does that mean, right? So right now, you know, we live in a place where, you know, electricity is ubiquitous. So virtually any parking space can be a place to fuel. And so what this means for businesses is that we sell everything that they need to electrify their parking spaces from hardware in the form of charging stations, software subscriptions that connect to a network, and associated services like support, uh, warranty, and otherwise. Um, All right. we, don't, we don't directly monetize energy or drivers like some of the other uh, companies in the category, but we enable our customers to do that. And so our model is really designed to help support other business models. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're a commercial customer, which makes up the bulk of our business, and let's say you have a workplace and you want to offer charging for your employees, then we offer all of the tools to be able to help you do that and, and be able to manage it for you so you don't have to worry. Uh, we work with a number of retailers um, who want to you know, attract customers. They want to keep them in the store longer. Uh, but we also have the technology to be able to enable charging into loyalty programs. So if you have a loyalty program and you want to you offer perks to your loyal customers, 
our technology actually al allows you to do that with the charging that you offer. Um, on the other side of the coin, um, our fleet. So like our, basically any model where mobility is part of your business and fleet is a perfect example. Um, so we actually work with a number of different companies that have fleet and we basically provide the platform from which they can better and more seamlessly manage their electric fleet um, or even integrate with other um, other platforms like payment systems and otherwise so that they have everything in one place. Now, I'm going to turn the page a bit and look at drivers because we also work with drivers. And really with our, our, our goal with drivers, just like it is with station owners, is to make fueling and the transition to electric as easy as possible. Uh, and so what that means is we try to develop solutions that integrate EV charging into people's lives. So that starts with our mobile app. Um, you know, our mobile app is, is designed to be the center of the EV charging universe for EV drivers. And so what that means is you can find information about public charging, uh, you can find station status, you can start a charge, uh, but you can also find information not only about stations on the charge point network, but stations on other networks. Um, in addition to that, <clears throat> if you have home charging, and we offer the charge point home flex, which you and I talked about a couple of weeks ago, um, you can actually manage home charging through the app with your charge point home flex. And if you have a utility rate program that is designed to um, allow for charging in off peak times, you can actually integrate that into the app for the home charging station so that you can know that when you're charging and when you schedule charging, you're doing it off peak. That helps to save you money All right. um, and a number of other things. So, yeah. so really like right. it's a full electric management, either from a business standpoint or from a consumer standpoint. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're, 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 we're the trusted advisor. We're the platform that enables it. Uh, we're kind of all of the above. I mean, the other thing that I didn't mention, which I think is really important, is the integration piece. So we uh, have developed a platform that integrates with other either vehicles, other apps, um, with your smart home assistant like Alexa. So you, 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 I think you've driven over the last couple of weeks the SC, XC40 recharge. Um, and that actually is one example of where uh, the charge point DAP ADA, uh, uh, app data excuse me, uh, that you find in the app is actually going to be integrated in Dash in that vehicle and others um, so that you can actually get all that information from station status, location, start of a session directly from the in-dash screen. Um, Chevy announced a couple of months ago uh, integration into their My Chevy app. So that's another example where you can integrate charging data in a, in a native OEM app so that you have one place to, to search and find all that information. And then finally, there's the Apple CarPlay integration, uh, which we announced back in September or October, uh, which basically takes all of the charge point data in the app and actually incorporates it into the Apple CarPlay experience. So you can do everything that you normally would do in the app in the vehicle. So really for us, it's about making it easier, creating that those integration points, and, and really just you know providing the information um, and the resources so that you can charge where you need when you need to, but also that you can – uh, go into the places where you go normally to get your information and be able to actually have that integrate that information integrated. Now, the, here's a very weird question, but can you, cause you take in data from other, um, other, obviously other sources, you know, you, for instance, you said you can find uh, other charging, uh, other charging That's places. Right. Does that also integrate into, let's say Apple CarPlay. So, you know, through your system. All right. So, so ultimately the charge point app could be your gateway to everything. That's right. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that you kind of alluded to, so our app allows you to see other stations on other networks, uh, but there are a number of stations or a number of networks that we have roaming integrations with. And what that means is let's say you're, you have a charge point account and you go to an EVgo station, you can use your ChargePoint account to start a session on an EVgo station. You can do that with Flow in Canada, and others are coming online soon. Um, and so when you look at the kind of the broader picture, we have more than 115,000 places to charge on our own network in North America and Europe. But uh, you have an additional uh, 134,000 more, actually, places to charge through roaming agreements. So, so yes, it's really designed to be your, the center of your charging universe and to be able to do everything from the app.
Uh, and if so, can I pay for my other my other electricity through your app for somebody else's uh, charging network? That's exactly right. Oh. Everything is everything is handled as it as it would if you were charging in a charge point station. And and I should note that if you're in, if if you are in one of these other networks, um, we have a bilateral agreement because for us it's about providing access to charging. Right. And so if another um, network's uh, account holder comes to our station, they, they would be able to have the same experience. That's just, right. Just give me a second while I delete all my other apps. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, th- this is cool. And then, and then of course, the home charger, which I'm getting as yes. well. Yeah. That's so, right. Wow. That's right. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a, the second um, generation of the ChargePoint Home. Um, it, it came out last, actually, a year before last. I feel like last year was a blur. Um, but it, a you know we we like to think it's it's one of one of the if not the most flexible charger on the market and really what right. it's designed to do is is to charge any vehicle that's currently available in the market as well as be uh, installed with any home electrical uh, supplier infrastructure and so the way that that happens is it's flexible so you can charge at 16 amps on the low end all the way up to 50 amps which is most uh, the highest. Uh, well, they do chargers yeah. available today. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's, it's really designed. So like if you have, you know, an early generation EV with a smaller battery, you can use the charge point home flex to be able to charge your car as you move to other EVs uh, with bigger would, batteries, yeah. you'd still be able to yeah. uh, keep that station and not have to replace it. With yeah, another. It would work. Daryl, um, I, I have a thousand more questions, but we're sadly we're running out of time. How can I find out more about charge point? Because I have so many more things I want to know. Yes. So our website, www.chargepoint.com, has and, all the information. Um, and all the charges that you do and those type of things. I will uh, update everybody more as that charger uh, gets installed. Uh, we're, I think, just uh, days away from being able to install that and uh, charge it. If you're thinking about a, uh, a home charger, it sounds like a really good solution. If you're thinking about a work charger, maybe that's a good solution too and managing your whole charging needs. All right, more on our auto expert. Stand by. Here it comes. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. To catch up with previous episodes of the show, our website is ourautoexpert.com. You can hear all past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily or at ourautoexpert.com. And that's where Jen spends most of the show reading articles because she works so hard on the week she doesn't have any time to catch up. Is that- <laughs> I'm trying to catch up myself. Is that true? <laughs> uh, this week, yes. We heard from Tyson Hominy from uh, from JD Parent Associates uh-huh. telling us that the hottest segment, the hottest segment, was the uh, the nice compact uh, subcompact yes. utility vehicle. Yes. That's what everybody's buying right now. Mm-hmm. It's deliciously uh, what everyone wants to get themselves into. And this one is no exception. This it is, is amazing. no exception. Absolutely. Uh, the Lexus UX and joining us to talk about the UX 200 F Sport, the premium vehicle, is uh, is Todd from Lexus. He's a senior analyst. Uh, so f- we just heard from J.D. Power and Associate that said in January this was the on fire segment right now. It must make you very proud, Todd, to know that uh, this is the hottest seller in vehicles right now. Hopefully they're flying off the lots. Uh, yeah, right absolutely. Now. Yeah, we... We sold just over a thousand in January, so sales are hot. People, people love the UX. Now, um, one thing I loved about the new uh, F Sport version is I, I sat Jen in it and I said, "Listen," and I put my <laughs> foot down. You certainly tuned the exhaust to be quite vibrant, even in a four-cylinder. Yeah. So it, the uh, UX that you drove is the two-cylinder, uh, sorry, two-liter four-cylinder, um, 100, 169 horsepower. Got a D4S direct in cylinder uh, injection. Um, yeah, really fast, and uh, glad you liked it. It's uh, it's kind of that entry level, I guess, aimed at those people that want to get into the luxury market but don't need to be buying themselves a hundred thousand dollar Lexus, right? Am I right? It, exactly. It's really geared towards move up buyers. So for many people, this is their first time with luxury, first time with Lexus. We are seeing a, a lot of move ups from you know uh, from the Toyota brand and from. Uh, uh, and we're also getting some conquests as well. Uh, I remember that uh, I think it was launched in Sweden, wasn't it? That's where you uh, did the launch of the vehicle. 
Yeah, they did the the long lead in Stockholm, uh, I think 2018. That was the first yeah, time I've been up for about three years. Uh, that's the first time I've ever been to Sweden, by the way, when I went there. Oh, lucky you. Um, that's I, beautiful. I went to the ABBA Museum with my UX. <laughs> <laughs> which oh, was, very nice. Which was a very uh, interesting experience, too, I will tell you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, I will also noted in that that uh, Europe was really a big fan of this, this vehicle. In fact, I think they probably sell more of them in Europe than they do in the United States. But it doesn't mean to say it doesn't have all the accoutrements that America's want, I- Americans want in this vehicle. Um, I was quite shocked to see it had things like Wi-Fi in the vehicle. Even in such a small vehicle, you've packed it full of tech and uh, the things that Americans yes. want to see in their vehicle. Loaded with technology, uh, standard Apple CarPlay, standard Android Auto. Also, Amazon Alexa. Uh, if you upgrade to the navigation, you get a 10.25-inch screen. As you mentioned, there's Wi-Fi, um, optional heads-up display, and optional wireless charge. Uh, and, and I think that's that's probably what most people are looking for in this. I mean, and it still has to have things like the Lexus Comfort, the Lexus Styling, the Lexus Safety features as well, right? Absolutely. On the topic of safety, it does have the latest um, the Lexus Safety System Plus 2.0, which is standard. So things like lane departure alert, lane tracing, auto high beams, pre-collision, pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control. Um, it also has standard blind spot monitor, which a lot of uh, drivers uh, appreciate. Now, I'm a Lexus owner, and one thing that's never Thank pointed you. at – well, you're welcome. Um, and, and, <laughs> I, and, you know, maybe offline we can talk uh, because I, sure. can't, I can't get rid of my tire light on my, uh, on my dash and don't know how to do it. And can't find out okay. online how to do it. But okay, I'm then sure. then you should do a tutorial and post it on Facebook. Well, maybe we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, po- post it on. We can help YouTube. you out with that. Um, so so one of the things that they don't tell you when you buy a Lexus mm. is, I mean, and I don't know if you've experienced this, Jen, and maybe you don't like this or thing, but when you go to a spa. You know how they meet you at the door and they put you in the robe and they give you scents and a glass full of juice and everything like. When I've you done go to, that once, when, yes. When you go to a Lexus dealership. Without the robe, it's pretty much the same treatment. Sweet. It's pretty much the same treatment. They meet you at the door, and they give you a glass of this, and they sit you down in a quiet yeah. room, and it's honestly like going to a spa without the robe business. That's awesome. It really yeah. is. Yeah. There's a word for that in Japanese called omotenashi. It's a hospitality. So there's also something called the Lexus Covenant, which is treating a guest like you would they're, like they're in your home. So, yeah, it's very common at Lexus dealerships. It's, uh, it's a secret, like, you know, I always feel like it's a secret club society. they don't tell you about it's when you buy it. Like, yeah, buying it, there's like this secret, like, we're going to treat you right, paint your nails, uh, you know. That's the way it should be. I mean, some car, some places wash your car when they do an oil change. <laughs> These guys, you feel like you almost don't get the same car back. It doesn't look the same. It's much yeah. cleaner and it almost looks like you're on a paint job, Absolutely. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm in love with the F Sport. <clears throat> yeah. That's beautiful. And that blue, oh. Yes, they did yeah, a great job. F- F-Sport had some really unique uh, content. There's a um, different grill. You get different bumpers. Um, the multi-information display gets a little bit bigger. It's uh, 8 inch instead of 7. has a nice sliding bezel. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Um, and it drives a little bit different. There's a sport tune suspension and performance rod. Uh, I'm already in love with this. Uh, you know, we're obviously clearly running out of time, and I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours and hours more about this vehicle. Uh, just tell me uh, pricing and availability. So what what's the pricing start on the UX, and um, are they available now for 2021? So the starting price is 32900 and then I think what you drove is the F-Sport with premium, so that's thirty four nine. Not bad. Um, yeah, and then uh, definitely available right now um, at dealerships. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, there's the Black Line Special Edition coming out. Oh. Uh, we're only doing a mm-hmm. thousand of them. Production oh. starts next month, so look for that. That's exciting. Um, and, all right, just throw the price at me here. Let me just sit down. How much is it? So pr- pricing has not been announced yet. But oh. my favorite thing about it, it comes with a set of zero Halberton uh, travel cases. So that's oh. uh, really unique. And, and uh, we have color keyed over fenders for the first time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and luggage. All right, there you Anything go. that adds yes, luggage absolutely. is probably out of my price range. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can well look at it. So. <laughs> oh, well, that, well, I like that idea. All right, if you want to drive uh, the new uh, the new UX, then uh, the place to go is your new uh, Lexus, or your not your new, yeah. but your Lexus dealership. And uh, if you want to get one of the uh, the special editions, you should probably go and reserve it. Yes, right now. if there's only a thousand. Uh, yes, because uh, yes, is that a thousand in the U.S.? 
Yes, 1,000 U.S. All right. Wow. So, yeah, if you're living in another country and you're listening in Canada or we have listeners where in Japan or those places like In Germany. Might, we have yeah. a couple people in Germany. Yeah, you should probably uh, you probably check with your local distribution. But uh, otherwise, yeah. U.S., get to it right now. Hey, buddy, thanks. Uh, I'll email you about my tire light card, but thank you for spending some time uh, time with us today. If you want to drive that UX, uh, head to your Lexus dealership or uh, check out ourautoexpert.com. More on the show to come. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. This is Our Auto Expert Radio Show. Our Auto Experts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us, ask a car question, just direct messages at Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. There's a lot been happening in automotive news, and I have a good sampling here for you. If you're interested in buying a new car, truck, or SUV, we heard from Anton Wallman uh, last few weeks that uh, cars, trucks, and SUVs are also having some difficulty in uh, being sold due to the fact that uh, there are not a lot arriving into dealerships, but also J.D. Power and Associates saying that there are not big discounts. Most of the big discounts are over. And now there's a new problem looming, looming on the horizon. Auto production is coming to a halt at Ford's factories, and they're slowing down to two shifts due to a lack of computer shifts. In fact, GM and VW now saying the same. A number of companies, including Ford, holding halting production uh, due to the fact that computer shifts and, uh, chips and microchips are in slow uh, amount of production being made. Uh, a lot of companies now having to stop their production or slow their production because those chips that go into many of the brand new cars, trucks, and SUVs are non-existent. And even VW are trying to negotiate with a lot of companies that make those chips to get them directly to them so they can put them into vehicles. Although I do have a solution. Hmm. You know what my solution is? Those cars that are selling are not selling, like sedans that are sitting on the lot and not selling, that have the same chips in them, just take them out of there and put them in the new ones. Just saying. <laughs> That's expensive. Oh, just have a guy jaunt down to the end of the lot. Yeah, and then and you have the all truck. these vehicles that are going to sit there and never going to be sold. Well, they're not being sold now. But still, they have the opportunity to be sold. Yeah, well, their trucks are being sold. The second someone they hit the lot, they're just going. Well, it also could be... You're going to see tr <laughs> the prices of trucks, cars, trucks, and SUVs. Uh, trucks and SUVs get really high soon I, because I get people that, can't get, you know, you can't buy them. Well, and those chips are programmed for those specific vehicles, so you'd have to reprogram all, right. all the chips. Yeah, it's got a kid with a laptop. <laughs> Hire a teenager. Well, what's wrong with everybody? Yeah, uh, mon uh, starting Monday, Ford will cut to two shifts at its Dearborn, Michigan facility. Uh, they'll cut it down to one from from two shifts to one shift per day. And the Kansas City, Missouri plant is going down to two shifts. It's it's bad. I'm yeah. just saying it's bad. Apple is investing up to $3.6 billion into Kia. Uh, everybody's asking the question, though. No. Uh, Apple's investing in these companies. They're saying that they're going to have one of the Hyundai companies, the Hyundai Kia or Genesis, build the new Apple car. Apple hoping to put around 100,000 vehicles on the road every year starting around 2024. My question, why aren't Apple, who is an American company, choosing an American company to build their cars. Question. Just asking the question. Not saying that Kia and Hyundai don't build brilliant cars because they absolutely do. Hmm. Why aren't they choosing? I mean, there are Korean companies that build phones like Samsung. I mean, wouldn't you think that Kia and Hyundai would build a great Samsung car? Well, why don't you email the company? No, it's not my job. It's their job to do that. <laughs> email you. I'm not in charge of telling them what to do. <laughs> no, but it's I'm a good question. I'm in charge of question. telling a lot of people what to do, but not them. No, but it's a good question. It's a good question. I'm asking them publicly, why aren't you choosing an American company to make an American products car? Just a question. Throwing it out there. Got an answer? Hello? Hyundai? Kia? Hello? Well, we'll call them later. <laughs> I'm not calling them. I'm just asking the question. Why aren't you asking an American company to build an American company's car? Just a question. Don't have to be right, do I? Could you just imagine asking the question. They, can you imagine if they picked a zinger? No, I wouldn't be buying it. That'd be amazing. I mean, Apple have made some horrible products in their time. Oh, that's 
Well, I'm yeah, I'm not a big Apple fan myself. I'm, oh, I've got, I'm an I've Android. I've got both. Fan. I've got both. I'm just saying they've made some horrible products, but they've also made some brilliant products. Don't get me wrong. Let's talk about the next segment. This is my favorite. No, 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 no. Let's not leave it alone. Okay. This is a this is something that should be answered here. I don't think you're going to get the Kia. answer you want. They listen. Yeah, you know they, they do. do. James Bell, you listen. Yeah. What's well, the answer? We'll have him on just next week I'll, or the week after. Just want to know. Um, apparently, if you buy a brand new car, you drive it down the road and you hit two deer, not one, <laughs> but two deer in your brand new car, you have the opportunity to win a $2 million lottery ticket. This is what happened to this unlucky Lucky. North Carolina man. He was unlucky at the beginning of the day. Right. Bought a new car. Lucky man. Drove it. Hit two deer. Unlucky man. <laughs> won $2 million of the lottery. Lucky man. Lucky. Unlucky. Unlucky. Lucky. <laughs> he must be a so, Libra. He's I'm very balanced. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky. Unlucky. Lucky. Lucky man. Isn't that just weird? I think yeah. that's an amazing story. Bought a new car. Lucky. Hit a deer. Unlucky. Hit another deer. Unlucky. Won $2 million lottery. Lucky. And where is he from? North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. His name is uh, Anthony Dow mm -hmm. of Leland. Poor man. I mean, nobody wants it. My sister hit a deer in a forester. And she had two young, my nephews, who are now uh, Williams on the British gymnastics team. Nicholas is a, is a trampoline. Mm -hmm. uh, trampoline. I met him. So yes, nice. they are wonderful children, adults now. Yeah. Uh, they are wonderful individuals. So is my sister and her husband, wonderful individuals. Um, and uh, she was driving her Forester through uh, the forest, <laughs> as it so happens. <laughs> and uh, she, uh, she hit a deer, but yes. not only, she, which is traumatic enough. It hitting is very a deer, traumatic. yes. Ooh, horrible. Hit okay. a deer. Yeah. And then, and then. It went up over the car and came in through the back window, still alive. Oh, my God. And she had two children in the back of the car. <gasps> now, traumatic, you have no idea, with two screaming boys in the back of the car. Screaming. <laughs> and my sister. Your poor sister. <laughs> who is emotional at the best of times. And I found out she's shorter than me. Uh, yeah, uh, she's the only one in the world. My sister, <laughs> who is emotional at the worst of best of times. Poor girl. Screaming children, mm -hmm. deer flopping around half dead in the back of the Subaru Forester. Oh my God. It was awful. Anyway, why should I relive that? I shouldn't have to. Uh, this is a story which I think is absolutely precious and probably it would have been great because you were trying to get the vaccine for your parents. Yeah, I'm trying. If you want a corona vaccine, what you have to do is get caught in a snowstorm in Oregon. That's how you get it. That's how you get a corona vaccine. <laughs> Which is nearly impossible right now. We're not predicting Well, an, uh, Oregon, uh, a health official in uh, southern Oregon said uh, he gave six doses of the corona vaccine to motorists who were caught with him in an impromptu snowstorm on the roadside. So these guys were stranded in a snowstorm together in Josephine County. And he said on Facebook that about 20 of his personnel came, uh, were stranded on uh, Tuesday on Highway 199 near Hayes Hill on the way to Grants Pass. Um, and they vaccinated people. That's cool. There you go. There Hi, you I'm go. sorry you're caught in a snowstorm. Here, give me your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Vaccine. I wonder how they got their second shot. Do you have to wait there for two weeks? Do you have to wait in the snowstorm for two weeks? Three weeks? What is uh, it? 30 days? I don't know, Nick. Uh, stay here for 30 days, and we'll get you your second shot. Come back here in 30 days. How does that work? What if you didn't want the vaccine? Did you get it anyway? Did they give? Did they ask? Do you want the vaccine? What would ha Here's my thing. I actually think <laughs> it's that... It's an that, odd story. It's an odd story, but I think that's kind of dangerous. Do you know why? Yeah, because you're in the middle of a... Snowstorm in the middle of nowhere. If you're immobilized in the middle of a snowstorm and somebody had had a bad reaction, yeah. if somebody had had an anaphylactic shock, <laughs> what, how would you have got them out to a hospital? Would they, have had, would they have had the anaphylactic equipment there to treat someone who had gone into anaphylaxis? Who knows? Let's talk about trucks. I want to talk about trucks. Go on then. Talk about trucks. 
Motor Trend Trick of the Year. You've got two minutes and 30 seconds. Motor Trend Trick of the Year is? Yeah. Tell me. Do you know the TRX? Yeah. 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 What about it? Well, it's amazing. You were talking about truck trends. We're supposed to talk about truck trends. Oh. And well, technology the so and... The TRX, yeah, but now there's the new Raptor, which I know. we're going to get to talk about soon, which is better. I'm really curious. Uh, we should ask. That, that's a great question to ask uh, Brian Bell coming up. He's the marketing manager of uh, the third generation of Ford F-150. Mm -hmm. Raptor. I know. Uh, I think that'll probably be, uh, we'll be riding and driving that this fall, I'm going to guess. I hope so. Um, I'd like to drive both of them side by I side. I hope. Oh, I bet you the, it'll be better because they'll never bring it out. It'll be worse. I hope <laughs> that the uh, F-150 Raptor does a better fuel economy than the TRX. You know what the fuel economy in the TRX is? Uh, 18 miles per gallon. I wish. I don't know. 12. Oh, I get that now. <laughs> <laughs> My truck's about 200 years old. My other truck, I get about 12. Yeah. Well, that, but it's not a Raptor either. No. I don't have that car payment yeah. or truck payment. Although it does have whatever, 718 million horsepower. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of exciting. I wonder what the uh, fuel economy is. Well, that's definitely a quick. Can you write that down? Make sure we ask him what the fuel economy is in the new Raptor. Because as long as it's better than 18 miles, uh, 12 miles a gallon, I think that's going to be good. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk to Brian Bell about the new uh, Ford Raptor. That's coming up as well. If you want to listen to this show and many more, I'll complain about anything. He uh, may not Jen, want to. <laughs> uh, Jen's email address is, what's your email address? I don't know, Charlie. What? No. You, you can, can find Truck Girl Jen. Uh, she's on social media. Just yeah. Truck Girl Jen. You just send her messages on social media and you can be angry at her. Because it's all her fault. You could actually go to Our Auto Expert on Facebook and or write your comments. Any complaints can go to 4, 11, and 3 quarters on Facebook. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about the brand new Ford F 150 Raptor. That's on Our Auto Expert. Stand up. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Over 10,000 people download our Auto Expert podcast and many more stream our Auto Expert podcast. Join the happy listeners by iHeartRadio, Spotify, the Pandora app, Deezer, Podbean, Castbox, and ourautoexpert.com, along with Apple Podcasts. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is Our Auto Expert, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. All right, it uh, dominated the news as far as new vehicles were concerned this week. Brian Bell joins us from Ford Trucks. He is the marketing manager to talk about the third generation F-150 Raptor. So uh, despite the people moaning that they didn't get the six liter, it was a pretty amazing uh, launch of the brand new Raptor and 500 miles on a single tank. I mean, it pretty much knocks the socks off anything else that's on the market today, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it sure does. This new uh, third generation Raptor is going to be just a fantastic off-road truck for customers. Now, the big question is, uh, do we have numbers on all the stats of uh, how fast, how far, all that sort of thing? I know it has amazing suspension, and I looked at that uh, in some of the video. You've got some great video, mm -hmm. and if you go to OurAutoExpert.com, we did a little video on it, looked at the, uh, the suspension. You've got some great shots of the suspension underneath the vehicle, the all-new five-linked rear suspension. You can see it working. You can see it traveling as the vehicle uh, goes over the desert, but what do we know so far? about uh, what's been, what have you guys released so far about, uh, about the vehicle as far as uh, the, the, the stats on it? We know it has a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. We know it'll do 500 miles um, on a single tank, but what else do we know? Yeah, so, so powertrain wise, we, we haven't given the horsepower torque yet. That work's still being done. We don't quite have those final figures. Um, and it'll be over 500 miles on a tank of gas. We don't have those final figures yet either. So that, the powertrain wise, it is our 3.5 EcoBoost high output engine. Um, kind of, it's similar to what we had last year, but it should be slightly improved. Uh, but we do have some suspension stats out, which is really the core of what a Raptor is, right? When you think about that off road vehicle, it's really all about that suspension, that long travel suspension and off road capability. And, and the, the truck's amazing. So, we, you know, we added a, uh, over an inch of travel to it. It has 14 inches of travel in the front, 15 in the back, uh, which is incredible, right? That you're getting to race truck levels of, of suspension travel yeah. from this um, long travel suspension system. And, and, of course, you mentioned the five-league. That's the really big story for us is that this is a specially designed 
uh, Raptor only five link suspension. So really, our our engineers at Ford Performance really uh, optimize what that suspension would be for the Raptor use. It isn't from any other uh, any other vehicle out there. And so that's that's really great. And then of course we partner with Fox Shocks. We bring in their next generation live valve shocks. It's a three point one inch diameter shock, so it's the largest shock in any OEM vehicle. And this shock is so smart, right? It, it, it measures the terrain. 500 times a second. So they, they, somebody told me that's about the same speed your brain calculates. So it's wow. it's a really, really smart shock to give you all that great capability. Just to let you know, my brain's a lot slower than that, just in case you were doing calculations. I don't, I don't calculate that fast. <laughs> well, normal, I'm, I'm sure mine is too. <laughs> a normal brain might. 37-inch tires are bigger than anything else. How, how much of a departure is this from, it sounds like it's a huge departure from the regular F-150, almost uh, completely redesigned. Oh, it, it, well, the, the suspension certainly is completely redesigned, but it is, a, it is an F-150 at its core. It comes down the same assembly line. That, that It's a unique frame, but it uses a, an F-150 frame as the ground of the starting point, and then they modify it for the Raptor uh, attachments. But, but it, is a, it is an F-150 at its core, and it, you know, we launched that new 21 model year F-150 just, oh, it, they really started showing up, showing up in dealerships late in the last year. There's all that great new F-150 items that are in this truck as well, right? Our 12-inch touchscreen with Sync 4 and our, uh, you know, and one of our big stories is the 2-kilowatt pro-power on board and burner yeah. system. So it's like having a generator with you when you go out. So think of those desert runners. They're out there. They've got 2 kilowatts of power without having to pack anything in the back of the truck. Just yeah. No, that's a huge win as well. I mean, obviously, information is going to get coming every month every couple of weeks as we get closer and closer to launch and ride and drive times when are we looking at a we can drive it as journalists and b we can see it arrive in dealerships what what what's of the timeline for the arrival of this new raptor yeah so so all of that will happen later this summer right so it's it's uh it's a it's a later summer time frame for for our media drives and for our uh, uh, for vehicle starts to come to the show, will be shortly after that. So, just just in time but, uh, for vaccinations. Then, lots of information. Yeah, just in time for Pardon. all of us to get our vaccinations, right? Yeah, yeah. So we can <laughs> uh, we can get back together and ride the vehicle, which would be awesome. All right. Uh, the, you know, it's going to be in high demand, and of course, it's it's going to be probably an online ordering. You guys seem to have got that down after Marquee e and Bronco. So at some point, I'm going to guess you're going to start opening up online orders for this thing. Is that the the sort of general format? Well, we we have information available on Ford.com. It isn't uh, it isn't following the the Mach E at this point, but you can go to Ford.com and find out all the information that you we're looking for on the vehicle right now. And as more becomes available, we'll continue to put it up on that website. All right. that's, uh, that's the best place for it. All right. So uh, the other couple of things I noticed, which were very similar to Marky and Bronco, are you going to have the phone, uh, the you know the app, so you can do things like unlock it, start it. You can also uh, do things like turn the lights on. You're going to get over the air updates. You're going to get Ford Pass. You're going to get voice recognition, all those type of things. So it's going to have the the latest uh, information and the latest connectivity as well, right? No, that, it definitely will. And, and even uh, there's some truck specific things in that Ford Pass app because. At its core, Raptor is a truck, and people buy it because they need a truck, but they just want one that's great off-road. So it, it's got great towing and payload, 8,200 pounds of towing in this new truck. But the, the Ford Pass after the truck comes also with our, our trailer light check, what we call zone lighting, so you can literally control all the lights on the truck, including our built-in spotlights from the app. So if you're out somewhere at a campsite, you can turn on just those lights from your phone. Uh, you know, And, and uh, of course, you can control our Pro Power Onboard Generator System. Uh, and it has a trailer theft system as well. So lots of extra stuff for that Ford Pass app for a truck. All right. And I presume that the R, and you said the R is coming. I presume you've already got a Baja team ready to go. Well, so, so the Raptor R will be a vehicle on sale for customers, street legal vehicle for customers in 22 uh, calendar year. Uh, we have announced it's coming. And, it, you know, I mean, think of it kind of like we did with the, the GT350 and the GT350 R, right? All it's right. going to just be that next level, kind of growing that Raptor even farther. It will have a V8 engine, but uh, more specs on that or more stats coming uh, as we get closer <laughs> next year. All right. We, uh, we are waiting with bated breath because uh, we didn't realize there was more, that much more excitement in it, but I guess people are going to get uh, more excited as well. Brian Bell is Ford Trucks Marketing Manager, third-generation F-150 Raptor. Go to Ford.com to get more information. I'm pretty excited, and even knowing that the R and the V8 is on the way as well just means you got to wait a little longer, but it's going to be worth it. 
uh, go check out the video at OurAutoExpert.com. And, of course, you can go and check out more of this show on our podcast at OurAutoExpert.com. Sign up um, and please uh, subscribe at OurAutoExpert.com to the podcast as well as watch the videos. You can see those videos that we do every week on all the TV stations around the country. You can also see our live broadcast, which is going on this week. We're doing it uh, from uh, Detroit, and we will have that Ford Raptor in our live broadcast from Detroit. You'll be able to go and see us walk around the truck and talk about that truck uh, from the, uh, the I think it's the Stahl Museum in uh, Detroit this week, as well as a bunch of other new cars, trucks, and SUVs that you have never seen before as well. So stand by for that. Our Auto Expert and OurAutoExpert.com will be back again next week. Pack show. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget, we're there 24-7 on the website. You've been listening to Our Auto Expert with Nick Mile. Find all the show episodes at OurAutoExpert.com. Please follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Our Auto Expert. And message us for a quick and witty response. 